Hi, Ray Baker, Jim, with the Wounded Arms Project again. And today we're with Steve Schneemann. He has his own architectural firm here in Farmington Hills. Steve, thank you very much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thank you very much. And Steve is going to be talking to us today about architecture and what leads into the profession, uh, his experience with it. Um, and we also have the benefit that Steve is also an instructor at Lawrence Tech, of all places, one of our favorite places to go to. And he teaches architecture classes there, and we'll talk to him brief, uh, briefly about that as well. Um, Steve, uh, I guess uh, our big uh, comment to everybody is to learn how to start drawing, to be able to develop skills and think about uh, a college career. Uh, can you give us a little background as to where you've come up with drawing and sketching in your time and how it helped you become an architect, if it did? Sure. Well, well drawing skills are very important uh, in architecture. Uh, particularly because as an architect many times you're trying to communicate an idea to a client and so being able to sit down and sketch that idea out um, particularly in front of a client um, is uh, it's a rare skill but it's also a valuable skill and um, and just as importantly being able to conceptualize something in three dimensions is very important so perspective drawing for instance can start to illustrate uh, what something looks like, not in two dimensions, but in three dimensions, because really architecture is about uh, working in three dimensions. Uh, we tend to think, uh, as architects, we tend to think very spatially and in three dimensions. So being able to draw something and indeed even being able to build it um, is very important to be able to illustrate those ideas that you have uh, for some creation to your to your client and <clears throat> prior to the film starting to roll here we talked for a few minutes and you mentioned uh, as a as a kid you used to uh, draw up and want to build wasn't that uh, wasn't that one of the kind of things that uh, it was actually really, drives you want to be an architect it was really a passion of mine um, and uh, yeah we did we were speaking and uh, I mentioned that when I was younger I used to spend a lot of time sketching and doodling um, and but I would also build with uh, Legos were favorite things uh, when I was a kid and uh, indeed uh, many of the students that I teach at Lawrence Tech uh, when I asked them what got them initially interested in architecture they mentioned uh, probably the two top things are drawing I love to draw and uh, building with uh, building blocks typically Legos so um, Legos hold a special place in the heart of an architect so <clears throat> not only being able to have some drawing skills to start, but really wanting to be creative and build things. That's right. Okay. And uh, you're an architect, like we mentioned to begin, uh, to begin with, and you have your own firm here in Farms and Hills. It's a yes. small startup. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a small firm to start. Yep. How many people do you have here? You've got uh, we have four. Four. Mm -hmm. And um, how long have you been in operation? We've been, uh, we started, uh, we opened our doors in 2002, and uh, it's now 2010, so we're going on eight years. And what kinds of clients do you typically deal with? Uh, really, we like variety, mm -hmm. and so we try and um, we we try and take on projects that um, we especially like projects that are things we haven't necessarily done before. So, for instance, on the table, uh, we've got uh, projects that really represent uh, all sorts of different kinds of work. This one for uh, the University of Michigan is a very uh, infrastructural project, um, a lot of engineering involved, some building involved. Uh, one here is a conceptual project for a, a mixed-use building, uh, retail and residential in downtown Farmington. Um, this project here with the materials laid out is really an interior design project. Uh, we're uh, renovating the interior of an existing office building. This project is a, uh, a proposal for post-production sound studio. And then uh, running here on the computer is a fly-through, uh, virtual fly-through of a 40-acre uh, campus for an orphanage and a school in, uh, in Africa. So uh, it's never boring what we do. And um, I find that architects tend to be people that are um, pretty good at a lot of different things. They don't necessarily excel in one thing, but they have interests that lie in lots of different areas because architecture is a very broad practice and so you have to have an understanding of an appreciation for a lot of different um, 
aspects of uh, the world in which we live and able to be an architect. So uh, it's, there's never a dull moment here in our office. Um, for myself, I sort of wandered around a bit. I went to different colleges. I thought I was going to be an engineer. And I just, you know, just wasn't there. It didn't click. And then when I got to architecture school, literally it was weeks. Within a few weeks of being in architecture school, everything clicked, and I, I realized this is where I belong. It took me four years to get there, uh, to figure that out, but, but I was surrounded by creative uh, people, people that uh, liked to build, liked to sketch, liked to think in three dimensions and talk about creating and making positive change. And, um, and interestingly enough, my grades followed. I had always sort of, sort of struggled and uh, went to engineering school and didn't do so well. And, um, but then when I got into architecture school, my grades shot way up because I sort of, I finally found where I belonged. And the math wasn't too <laughs> wasn't too difficult either, so that was that was another nice bonus. Mm. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. So you, uh, the the self employment aspect has been very good for you, in, in being an architect. Well, being self employed is not without its struggles, as you might imagine. Um, but uh, for the, for the most part, yeah. If uh, if. I ask students at school what their desire is ultimately for the career. Uh, the vast majority say that they want to have their own architectural practice. And um, so you know, I think it's a laudable goal. And um, I would encourage any, any um, prospective architecture student to, to pers pursue that. There's no pun intended on the prospective <laughs> student. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, okay, well, that's a nice segue into actually one of the other reasons we're here to talk to you today, Steve, is you're uh, an instructor, a professor at yes. um, uh, Lawrence Tech University. Correct. And what kinds of things do our our GIs here want to consider if they're you know sitting there sketching and doodling and you know thinking I like to be creative? What are some of the things they might actually expect to see as a first year student? Do you think? Well, as a first year student, um, you're gonna take courses that uh, have the word basic in them. Um, so basic design, for instance. Uh, there's another course at Lawrence Tech, and at most universities, um, that we call it visual communications, but it's about being able to take your ideas and represent them either in two dimensions or in three dimensions so that you can get ideas across to a client and uh, how to do that. So what you can expect your first year is Essentially, what I talked about earlier in our discussion, and that's a lot of drawing and a lot of building. So being able to build small models um, and then being able to sketch um, are really important for your uh, early years in architectural education. Mm -hmm. Because those are really your, those are the <coughs> sort of building blocks, if you will, uh, to be able to um, think spatially, think three-dimensionally, and learn how to get your ideas across. And that's all before you start, you know, really designing a building, per right. se. Now, you also mentioned, uh, prior to the film again, that um, students are still actually going out and sketching buildings on campus. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's also a, a, a new development, <clears throat> and this is, uh, you know, maybe a little counter to what we're trying to do, or it's, it's further down the road from what we're trying to do to get uh, you folks drawing and, you know, getting your hands moving and creating shapes and learning spaces and all that. But uh, Steve, you're telling me a lot of the work now is done on computers. That's right. But there's still a, you still want to have a basic understanding oh, of drawing and being creative. And well, because, and I mentioned earlier <clears throat> that um, when you're sitting in front of a client, um, it's, it's not really practical to um, ask them to sit there and wait a moment while you spend an hour drawing on your computer so that you can show them something. Uh, but what is practical is be able to be able on a piece of paper sketch something for them to show them an idea. So um, there's still tremendous value in, even though the computer has become ubiquitous with our pra practice, uh, being able to sketch in front of a client um, has tremendous value as well. So really it's using those hand in hand. So for instance, here in my office, when I have an idea for a design, I will sketch it quickly and I will hand it to somebody that's working on the computer and then they will start to input um, 
the sketch and the idea from the sketch into the computer, but that sketch, they have to be able to understand what it is that I'm showing them in two or in three dimensions. <clears throat> now, we had a, another video series.